Well, all right. Uh, last week, Mr. Brian Weedai, we posted a press row podcast where we discussed a couple of things related to FIFA. One being a lot of the uh, you know difficulties that FIFA is having related to you know their leadership being arrested or indicted and carted off, and you know allegations of corruption and such. But there was also a conversation that we had on the show. Uh, about the inclusion of women's national teams, at least a dozen of them, for the first time in a FIFA game. And there was a lot of discussion back and forth, and if you haven't listened to it, I strongly suggest doing that. Um, There's a lot of discussion back and forth about, well, was it enough that was done? Was it too much? All that kind of stuff. And and we got some interesting questions. Interesting feedback, and I wanted to go over a few of those with you, and then get get your thoughts on that. The first, the first one I thought um, was interesting was a series of tweets um, that I got from a buddy of mine named Darby. Uh, he's actually, I believe, still lives in Japan, an expat, uh, and he said a few interesting things. He said, um, "I think the U.S. perspective gives an unrealistic view of the global popularity of the Women's World Cup. It's not there." Also, there are two dozen leagues that EA should prioritize over Major League Soccer. You have panelists who often talk business realities, but have a blind spot with FIFA. And I don't think he's saying that in a mean way. Like I said, he's a buddy of mine. I think he's just being kind of matter of fact. So let's talk about the first one. Do you do you think he might be onto something saying that uh, the global popularity of the Women's World Cup might not be as much as we uh, on the on the podcast think that it is? I think I think that can definitely uh, have some truth to it. Now, the way they're marketing this is probably more heavily as far as the women go in, in North America, and that's for a reason. It's that's where the popularity is among the female kind of consumer base and, and girls playing uh, across the nation. So, um, there, there's a lot of considerations that go into making these decisions: what they put in, what they take out, all of that. And they do tons of research on it, so you have to know. I think the the, the difference here, as opposed to a league versus uh, a gender, is is money for EA. It, they have probably peaked with who they can sell the game to, 13, 14, 15 million copies a year, unless they expand on who they're going after and offer those people something in the game that they can relate to, that they can be of interest to, and the female demographic uh, has not had that in FIFA. So it's a great way to go after a new group of people to get them to buy their game, whereas a league in, in a particular country is probably not going to lift sales as much as bringing women in will for this series. Okay. Fair point. Um also, his comment about how there are at least two dozen leagues that EA should prior t- prioritize over MLS. Clearly, uh, you know, talking about our conversations, multiple conversations that we've had, sort of lamenting how Major League Soccer is not as well represented as we would not perhaps like it with official stadiums, for example, and perhaps things, co- other competitions like the U.S. Open Cup or things like that. Um, again, I'm not a, and I don't never purport to be, I, I love international football. I love the Premier League. I watch as much of like the Champions League as I can watch this, uh, watch the game or the match this past weekend, as a matter of fact, where uh, uh, Barcelona beat Juventus. So I am certainly conversant, but I am also by no means um, well <laughs> or even at all um, knowledgeable about many leagues other than the Premier League, the Spanish League, the Italian League to a small degree, the German Bundesliga to a small degree, French even less. And then after that, I'm pretty much completely you know, out of the loop. So it's difficult for me to say whether another league should or should not be prioritized over MLS. But I, I his point really, and it's I, I, certainly a potentially a valid one, is that we, you know, the press for a podcast panelists in particular, because we are Americans and Major League Soccer is ours, tend, tend to drill into that a lot more do you think that there is some um, you know some truth to his statement there could be as many as you know two dozen leagues that ea should further prioritize over mls well i I don't have the numbers but um you know mls is growing uh quickly 
in the U.S. and uh, in North America. And that's one area that obviously the game being made in the country or, you know, just outside the country in Vancouver uh, that they would like to take advantage of. And that's a, a place for growth, again, with the video game. And there are some, you know, hundreds of, of teams in, in FIFA that if we had <laughs> the usage numbers on, we look at and say, why are they even in the game? Uh, because people tend, you know, a heavy, a heavy percentage of people tend to play with the same teams or at least the same top leagues. So it's, you know, you, again, you have to look at growth. Where is the potential for growth? And um, and it just, you know, it's it's a business decision again that they're going to be making, and they have a lot of data in front of them, and you usually see them acting on that data. Yeah, I mean, I'm at the top of that list, right? Every year when I get FIFA. I'll typically start a premiership uh, career with Everton, and that's what I do. In particular, the last two or three years as I've gotten much more familiar uh, with all the teams and leagues. A couple other comments I wanted to, to mention. Um, these come from some of the comments on the Operation Sports uh, where the, the podcast was posted. One person says, you complain about the women not being able to play men and complain that they won't be there for the Women's World Cup in June. However, we don't have youth teams or major leagues across the globe that a heck of a lot more people would want. Uh, we don't have the Copa America in the game, and millions more care about that than perhaps the Women's World Cup. It may be a bigger deal in America but elsewhere, but the world is a heck of a lot bigger than America, and FIFA is a global game. You know, He mentions youth leagues. Like when I do play as Everton, there is a youth club that I can, you know, sign players to, but yeah, you can't actually play with them. It almost kind of feels to me like practice in Madden, where for years we would want to be able to practice, maybe take that second or third string quarterback out in the field, see how they throw. And then when you've got your youth league clubs, you know, particularly as a follow of Everton, I get updates on their U21 club and stuff like that. And so at, the more you get into the – the sport, the more aware you are of those things. I thought that was an interesting comment where it, it appears if you are more than just a guy like me, I, you know, somewhere between casual and, and fan, right, that there is definitely room for expansion at, at, uh, at other levels within some of the, the, the leagues that they have, like, uh, like a youth club. I'm curious your thoughts on that too. Yeah, uh, the commenter said something like, uh, you know, millions more want this, millions more want that. The problem is those millions that, it, it, assuming, that, let's say, that there are millions that want that, uh, those millions of people already buy the game in all likelihood. They're not not buying the game because these things are out. They just would like those things in. What they're doing with the women's uh, national teams is they're trying to bring in people who don't buy the game. And so, again, it's just down to business. And I think whether or not it's more people wanting those leagues, EA is looking at who can they bring in to uh, expand their, their user base and, uh, and grow with the franchise. If they can bring in girls, if they can bring in women who continue to buy the game year after year, who maybe spend money in Ultimate Team eventually when the women are added in there and stuff, uh, it's it, that's – what EA is going after here and and it comes down to you know every every year we debate what should be in this game what as opposed to a feature they put in or whatever and that's it's just what's happening here is he's EA is saying you know we can make more money by bringing in new people than we can by adding stuff for the people who already stick with us or who have already bought the game and are going to buy the game regardless yeah sort of the last comment <clears throat> it's um uh, you know, one of the one of the posters said, "How do you think people in the Ukraine feel not to have their league in the game? How do African people feel about having zero leagues for the entire continent?" Um, you know, there's a lot more people that follow the game in those places. You know, it really does point to the fact that yes, the FIFA much more than any other you know sports video game that we cover, other than obviously Pro Evolution as well, is a global game. Oh yeah, there's and, nothing that compares. Yeah. Right, and it is has a global constituency that, <laughs> wow, can you, I, you know, these are one of those times where I do not, uh, I, I do, <laughs> I'm not jealous or envious of the guys making the calls every year in the short amount of time that they have to decide what are we going to do, how are we going to do it, 
man, can because I'm sure all of these comments have been made directly, you know, through the various uh, ways that people get in touch with yeah. people as well, too. I mean, NBA 2K is probably the only one other than other than soccer. Uh, NBA 2K is probably the only one that really has global reach of the major sports games. NHL mm -hmm. does to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're well, NHL does too, actually, now that I say that. <laughs> but uh, but they both of them are missing stuff, you know, in NA or in NBA 2K. You have Euro League now, but they don't have Chinese leagues. You know, you have NBA players going to play in China and then coming back, but you don't have that in the video games. So it's just looking at you know, where are they going to expand next and stuff like that. And uh, they're focused on certain regions and, and certain territories that that they think is is financially the, the best decision for them. And um, you know, that's probably not going to change. There's a possibility they add more and all that, but only if they see that raising their sales enough to justify the, the costs involved. Yeah, and NBA is still NBA. You know, the National Basketball Association, it is, it, in its name, it is about the NBA, whereas FIFA, in its name, is all around the world. Yeah. So they definitely have a, a different threshold to meet to be complete. Now, conversely... They do have the Premier League. They do have La Liga. They do have, you know, the Bundesliga. They do have the Italian leagues. And, and I don't think they have all the stadiums and, and things like that. In fact, I know they don't in those leagues that they do for the Premier League. But so it, it's just this whole conversation has really raised my awareness about how many more choices and decisions that the guys making FIFA have to make about – not just the game and how the game is played and a new mode and a new feature, but who is in it because the number of leagues and players and competitions and organizations, right? The youth clubs and stuff like that is, is 50 times bigger of a universe to draw from than any other game other than again, pro Evo. So I, uh, I imagine we'll continue to have these kind of conversations moving forward, and it will be certainly be interesting to see where FIFA 16 lands on this as well as other things. So, all right, Mr. Weedai, thank you, sir. This is uh, definitely not the last time I imagine we'll be having this conversation. Yeah, as always. It'll come up every year with every game to some extent. That's true.